Hey everybody, so today's video might look a little bit different, a little bit more retro, and that is because I was inspired by the recent episode of WandaVision. And when they were talking about hex probability, I thought, you know, there is actually some real but strange science behind how that could actually work in reality. And a lot of it has to do with graph theory and also quantum physics. So I had a lot of fun doing this video. It's a little bit quirky, but I hope you have fun with it too. All right, let's go check it out. While I am usually a more pragmatic sort of person, I was inspired to dig into more of the quantum underpinnings of graph and probability this week. Here follows some of my musings, and I did put in the description box below some more resources if you want to dig into the real science behind some of this. And don't worry, I did pick resources that you do not need to have multiple PhDs to understand. So let's start with the beginning, where my inspiration for this video came from, and that is WandaVision a popular Disney show featuring two of the Avengers superheroes, Wanda, aka Scarlet Witch, and Vision. In season one, episode eight, Wanda is said to be manipulating a hex probability. Now keep that in mind, we will get back to that. And she is doing this to create an alternate universe where her companion, Vision, is not dead and the world around her is fashioned, strangely enough, after a sitcom. Okay, so what does that have to do with graph or quantum physics? It's just a comic book, right? Well, as many things from science fiction, reality is much stranger than fiction. And so let's dig into that a little bit more. So with quantum physics, think Ant-Man's subatomic particle manipulation, or the smallest part of matter. Now, I am using quantum physics here instead of quantum mechanics, mostly because mechanics pertains to the rules in real life, and this diatribe is definitely more on the rule-breaking side of the story. So when dealing with the quantum physics, there are those small particles. Those small particles can be described as fractals. Again, think Ant-Man traveling through quantum space for eternity, going deeper and deeper into the smallest atom of matter. Fractals are essentially how that would work. Fractals are the building blocks of all things, the shapes that can be infinitely repeated so that at the lowest level of human perception, you have an atom, and at the highest level of human perception, you have the universe. Zooming in and out, using broader and narrower imagery of spatial relations is a natural way that humans categorize, as are the characteristics of individual things. Both are the larger fractals of a thing and the more narrow particles are components of a thing. Fractals essentially can be the broader and narrower and the part of and has part kinds of relationships. And they are the way that we orient and define the things around us. Think of where you are sitting right now. Close your eyes. How would you describe where you are sitting to me. Go ahead, I'll wait. You most likely started with what location you're in, such as I'm in my living room or I am in Boston. Those are both broader spatial locations. You might've also thought about what you were sitting on, like a chair or a couch. Those are the more narrow classifications. Or perhaps you thought, I'm sitting next to my dog or in front of my computer. Now those are also spatial, but those are at the same level of definition, sort of like a linear relation. We define the world around us 
by comparing how something is in relation to another thing spatially and metaphysically. We define things in similes, which also draw on the real world interpretations from our senses. And that's what we use to define the world around us. Think Plato's Republic and the shadows on the wall allegory. Essentially, reality is only developed out of knowing how one thing is related to another thing, so that both things are defined by that relation. Think of something being in a complete void. There is nothing to compare itself to. There is no way to define more if there is nothing to compare to. And that is why relations between two different things are so integral to how we define our reality. It also happens to be how graphs or networks are defined. Now, that is how modern computational knowledge graphs are also defined, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about here. These things exist in nature. That is where the quantum physics of fractals defining our reality by relations, both great and small, to an infinite degree come into play. But that is just what humans can perceive. What about the things we cannot perceive? So let's take the quantum physics thought experiment of Schrodinger's cat. Now, this experiment is about a cat that is in a box. This box is completely enclosed. You cannot use any of your senses to determine anything about the cat within the box. Therefore, you cannot classify it. The cat might be toward the left of the box or the right. It might be dead or it might be alive. Essentially, all the possibilities of the cat are all true because our senses cannot determine which is correct. In the case of Schrodinger's cat, it can be one of two realities. The cat is dead or the cat is alive. But because both of those realities can be true in that moment, they essentially are both true. With this in mind, we can assert that when we cannot perceive something, all possibilities are probable. So instead of the fractal graph of one plane of reality, one universe, it is more about the quantum superposition that is created of all possible graphs, all possible realities. So let's think back to WandaVision. WandaVision is a great example and a fun example of how graph theory and quantum superposition actually would look if it were something that we could interact with and see. In the show, she is described as manipulating the probability hex to create an alternate universe where vision is alive. If we use the assertions we just walked through, the hex is the graph or the web of reality, but connected to all other probable realities in the Marvel multiverse or the quantum superposition that is created in the Marvel universe. So Wanda is bringing the West view and vision from another probability by pulling through the fractals of that reality or graph into our own. So basically, she is reorienting the world around her to relate to a vision that is alive and a West view that is more akin to a sitcom. All right, so I hope that you've enjoyed this deep dive into the strange workings of how quantum physics and graph theory could potentially explain some of the things that you are seeing 
in the Marvel Universe and specifically the most newest episode of WandaVision. All right, so with that, thank you very much for listening in and I'll catch you next time.